God Family Ministry International. I am Seema Walker, and on behalf of our founding pastor, the Reverend Dr. Otis Manning, and his praying wife, Prophetess Joy Manning, welcome, a special welcome to our viewers joining us on Facebook and YouTube at God Family Network. Remember, like the page, share it with a friend and a family, and do not forget to subscribe. We're coming to you live from 92 Redis Road. We invite you to come and fellowship with us at any one of our local branches at 680 Half Moon Street or in Maypen at the Denby Showground. And our Mandeville branch is at 71 Manchester Road. Service is on Sundays at 11 and on Wednesdays is fasting at 10.30 a.m. And for our international branch, we're in New York at 142 to 147 Farmers Boulevard. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And today is a very special service as we'll be celebrating with MTM TV, who will be celebrating their 25th anniversary of spreading the gospel to all the world. Listen, we invite you to come and partake in the goodness of God because there's power, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's break, there's testimony in God. Whatever it is that you are believing the Lord for, rest assured that our God is able to deliver. Now at this time, join the main stage as we open in prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, hallelujah, and turn up the fire, God, at a higher level in the name of Jesus more than this morning. God, because your people have come into your house, God, for a word, for a blessing, mighty God, for healing, for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, God, mighty God, through the word that they'll be delivered. Mighty God, through the, the praise and worship, they'll be delivered. Mighty God, through, oh God Almighty, the greetings, they'll be delivered. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus. My God, through the very word, mighty God, that the man of God is going to bring today. God, they are going to be delivered in the name of Jesus. We pray for the leaders of this house. We pray, God, that you bless them. We pray you cover them. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll never leave them, not forsake them. We pray, God, that you'll stand with them in the name of Jesus, that you'll guide them continually in the name of Jesus. Sit upon the man of this house in the mighty name of Jesus. Take him to another level. Give him a double portion of anointing in the mighty name of Jesus open his eyes God in the name of Jesus anoint his feet God in the name of Jesus anoint his hands from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet in the mighty name of Jesus bless his family in the name of Jesus father God we pray mighty God for those God that are coming to sing in the name of Jesus mighty God touch your voices in the name of Jesus sit upon the musicians in the mighty name of Jesus those that are watching us online God bless them as they watch in the name of Jesus let this be an extraordinary service in the mighty name of Jesus bless those that are in the house in the name of Jesus those that are coming in the mighty name of Jesus bless them God in the name of Jesus Lord I declare fire in this house fire upon the altar fire God a hey, Shabbat God to the gate fire in the seat fire upon the ushers fire upon the ministers in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah and we thank you God sit upon the other departments with fire in the name of Jesus father God whatever we fail to ask you for this morning fail not to grant it unto us in the name of Jesus God we slay every demons in this house mighty God that wants to come to distract and disturb your people in the name of Jesus we shatter it to pieces with your blood because you have given us power, mighty God. Power to speak in the name of Jesus. My God, when we call upon you, you'll answer as you're answering now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And we now say, Amen. Hallelujah. Please turn your Bibles with me to Psalms 88. And it reads thus, O Lord God of my salvation, I cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draw nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead 
like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in the darkness, in the deeps. Thy rod lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto thee, unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Selah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? And thy righteousness in the land of the forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord. And in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Last and ending. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and my acquaintance into darkness. Glory to God. There ended the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Glory to God. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has all the blessings in store for you. But you got to ask God to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to align yourself with God. And when you're aligned with God, when all the baggages are gone, when, all, when, when you are willing to let go, then the Lord will fill you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now welcome the praise team. Hallelujah. As we go straight into praise, I want you to give God thanks. That's what praise is about. Thanking God for where he has brought you from and where you could have been. I'm grateful every day, every minute, every second, every hour of the day, every year, every month. I'm grateful every week. I'm grateful for what God has done. So I want to give him praise. Glory to God. I want to show him how much I appreciate him. You got to show him. Glory to God. Because he deserves it. Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 People of God, I'm going to shout seven hallelujah. Glory to God. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Seven hallelujah shout. Hallelujah. Because I'm ready to give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 People of God, we're going to start again because my voice is not so well. And I'm giving God the praise. Glory to God. One, two, three. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Come on, stamp your feet. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Glory to God. We're going straight into worship. We're going to trample on the devil's plan. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Oh, hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. One more time. We are the big chain. Hallelujah. We are the big chain. We are the big chain. Hallelujah. We are the big chain. Hallelujah. Oh, we are the big chain. Hallelujah. We are the big chain. Hallelujah. We are the we are the victory. 
Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Cause every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that that Jesus is Lord. Oh, we have the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus saved me from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me from sin. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me from sin. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus save me from sin. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus save me from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus save me from sin. As I travel through this pilgrim life, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me simply to that thinking that it is the Christ on Calvary. This will be my bread, dear Lord, each day. Lord, help me to do the best I can when I need. To guide me to the oh blessed Jesus oh my head praise him blessed Jesus oh hallelujah come on people of God God to this land this pilgrim land praise him sing oh hey glory to God Put down on me when I need Hey, healing prayer Bless that Jesus Redeem When my burden of sin was high Redeem When my soul was Redeem My Lord Oh, redeem Redeem, but my soul. Redeem, 
God. I'm more quiet. Who only goes quiet? See, I give me part. Let me pray to God. If you stand, you know me way. Only goes quiet. We'll remove you. Give me power to join our world. So give me part. Let me pray. More quiet. More quiet. Who only goes quiet? See, I give me part. Let me pray to God. More quiet. Who only goes quiet? If God has given you the power, the God has put some fire and see it until then. Glory to God. The sons have more fire. Who only goes fire? You're asking God for more fire. Because they're going to tell Satan to get out of your way this morning. Glory to God. So I want to see the action. Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, more fire. Who only goes fire? See it and give me part of my prayer to God. Hey, more fire. Who only goes fire? See it and give me part of my prayer to God. If you stand in every way, only goes fire. We'll remove you. Don't try to work. So give me part of my prayer Oh, more fire. Who only goes fire? See it and give me part of my prayer to God. More fire. Who only goes fire? See it and give me part of my prayer to God. If you stand in every way, only goes fire. Stop those hands. Stop those feet. Come on, put your hands above your head. Glory to God. Put your hands above your head. What you're doing when you put your hands above your head? You're mashing up everything enemy above your head. Stop those feet. The Bible says you're champion of a serpent and scorpion. And nothing shall my enemies harm you. Glory to God. So let me see you put your hands above your head. Give God a clap. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like that's in my way. I feel like that's in my way. I'm on my way to glory. I feel like that's in my way. I feel like that's in my way. I feel like that's in my way. I'm on my way to glory. I feel like that's in my way. I feel like that's in my way. I feel like that's in my way.
in here uh, this morning. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it had not been for God, I would be six foot six. Uh, but I am here. Uh, and because I'm here, uh, I have to praise the name of the most high God. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands. Come on, close your eyes and just lift your hands. And begin to think of the goodness of Jesus. Begin to think about where he has brought you from. Hallelujah. 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 You're the God who was. Yeah. 
But they didn't have drums and keyboards. Hallelujah. But on the day of Pentecost, when they were in the upper room and they lifted their voice to Jesus, hallelujah. There was a move of God like a mighty rushing wind, and the Holy Ghost came down. And sit upon them when Peter and John was in prison. They worship, and there was a shaking. For there's power in your worship. There's power in your praise. But when you begin to praise God, the prison door 
force, ça me dit que la propre père soit la paix. Maïa de non, Raya. Hey, ya que tour la baïa. Hey, ya, 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 la baïa. Rabbado, Seketaya. Hey! It's not when you feel like it, but whether you feel like it or not. Right now I'm totally exhausted. I have to pray for God's strength just to be standing here in front of you this morning. But I come with a purpose, and that is to give Jehovah God a mighty praise and worship because He deserves. some things that some of you have been praying for and there has not been any result and you're saying God why how come the prayer my boss but God wants your worship God wants your worship God wants your worship who am I talking to this one I need to come up here to say that God wants your worship. Hallelujah. So before I hand over, I'm going to do one more. And I want you to worship God. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it all. Jesus. You are worthy of it all.
deserve you deserve the glory so I will praise you you are my everything this is an original song hallelujah so I
give God some crazy praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was saying before, in, I was in a dark place when I got this song. I didn't know what to do. It seemed like there was no way out. I was crying to the Lord and said, Lord, help me. Get me out of this. And I opened up my mouth and he put a song in my heart. And the words began to come. And I said, Lord, you are my everything. But even though I was in a difficult place, God wanted my worship. How many persons will still worship God while they're going through a difficult time? I do believe that's the best place to give God worship. I believe it's the richest, purest, and most powerful worship when you're growing through stuff. That's why he allows us to go through stuff. Without, without the trials, there's no growth. I just got that in my spirit. Let me say it again. Without trials, without persecution, there is no growth. There is no new level. Hallelujah. So when it comes, uh, just ask God uh, to give you the strength uh, to go through. Uh, but when you're going through, uh, you're moving forward. Uh, you're moving forward. Uh, press your way through. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome again to our second service. Hallelujah. Those who are viewing online, anyone here for the very first time? There is one hand, another hand. Come on, clap your hands for them and make them welcome. Hallelujah. 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 I trust that you will have a fabulous time today in the presence of the Lord. Just open up your hearts to receive what God has in store for you. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord at this time. Let's put your hands together and please make welcome our pastor. Come on, put your hands together for him now. Our Papa, Reverend Dr. Otis Manning, receive him in the care of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands and clap our hands for Jesus. Maybe y'all can clap a little better than you're clapping. Okay? Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Y'all can clap a little better than you're clapping. Come on. He's the King of Kings and He's the Lord of Lords. Come on, just put our hands together for Jesus. We declare Him Lord. We declare Him King. We declare Him Sovereign. And we declare there is none comparable to Him. There is none worthy of a glory. And so Father, today we take the time of, we take the time to shabak your name. We take the time to give you glory. We take the time, Lord, to just say thank you. You've been so good. You've been a great God. I want to appreciate you today for all you've done and all you continue to do. I give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, good to see you. Tell the next neighbor, good to see you. And I'm guessing that any minute now we should be live on MTM TV. Hopefully. Amen. Hopefully the guys in there have already made a click. Amen. I welcome you today, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special service. And I pray God's richest blessings upon you and to you. And indeed a blessing to be here with you. And I trust that your heart is in a place of worship. Amen. 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 Today we are here to celebrate with the family of MTM TV. It's their 25 years anniversary. Let's make some noise for them. Come on, you can make some more noise than that. Hallelujah. And so we're here to celebrate with them. And we have the owners of MTM TV and, um, who are right here, Mr. and Mrs. Hansen. Amen. And you'll be hearing a little more from them. Let's celebrate with them. 
And I'll say who I know. I see behind them. Um, uh, I think it's, I'm going, I'm going I, I, I don't remember uh, Mr. Harbajan's first name. Devon, Devon, Devon. Mr. and Mrs. Harbajan, let's celebrate for them. Amen. Y'all can clap better than that. She's the head of what was called the Prior Intercessory Network of Jamaica, now it's of the Caribbean. Amen. Amen. And there are some other pretty faces behind. Some I know. Some I'm still getting to know. And some is smiling at me. And I don't know why they're smiling with me. But it's a good smile. Amen. All right, so God blessings on you all. Amen. And you all should know this one. Amen. Yeah, this one behind. Amen. It's our sister in Christ. She is an employee at the MTM Cafe. They actually do, they, they do good um, what do you call this cake? Carrot cake. Carrot cake. Who's ever baked the carrot cake? Tell them to bake some more. Trust me, carrot cake I send over there on a weekly basis to get my carrot cake. Just across the road on Red Hills Mall. Amen. So today is their anniversary and um, we're here to celebrate. Amen. With them as we worship God. They're here to worship God with us. In a few minutes I'll be inviting them. However, there's a song. Amen. Um, the first theme I have to do. So I get out the way and allow them. All those who are watching me live on MTM TV, on uh, YouTube, Facebook, big up on yourself, and I pray God's richest blessings to you. And welcome to your 25th anniversary on MTM. And I know you guys will be having our entire month, or probably two months of celebration, and we're here to celebrate with you on that accord as well. Amen. Put your hands together, worship team. We'll be doing their item. Yeah. Amen. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go on and on and on.
gratefulness. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for them. Y'all can clap a little bit better than you're clapping. Hallelujah. Amen. Grateful. We're grateful to be alive. Anybody grateful to be alive? Anybody grateful to be alive and kicking? Anybody grateful to be thank to be in the house this morning? Amen. And we are grateful for the coverage MTM TV has helped to provide in the Caribbean diaspora. And um, I'm sure they are grateful for 25 years and grateful to be here. Amen. To celebrate. Hallelujah. And so the first up, oh, we may having a few persons becoming to share with us or to bring greetings, rather. And the first we're going to have is Reverend Maria Habaron. Amen. And she is a president, a founder, the CEO of the National Intercessory Network of Jamaica and the Caribbean. Amen. Amen. We make her welcome. Amen. Put your hands together. Have blessing, blessing, blessing to have this wonderful woman of God come and share with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello, church. Yes, he and I come from way back, you know, Pastor Otis. Way back. Yes. So I want to greet him as the shepherd or under God, the chief shepherd of this flock. I want to greet all the leaders who are here and all the members and visitors. I want to greet especially to the Hansons, the founders, the owners of MTM TV, the television station of the Caribbean and beyond. Amen. Amen. Yes, what a... Wow. I really want to say congratulations. I know it was not easy work. Some bumps must have been in the road, some potholes, some... Yes, 25 years? That's not chicken business. So, church, can we just say, thank God for MTM TV. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So... As I congratulate you on 25 successful years. And as I waited on the Lord, I just felt that there was a challenge. And, oh, also the staff. Let me not leave out the staff. They feel like family when we go to do our recording. It's like a family there. Any of the staff members here? No, I've not seen any of my friend them. Uh, not here, this one. Okay. All right. But I sensed two main areas that God wanted to challenge you. I want to say us, because we are on MTM television to courtesies of the Hansons, yes. So, you see, the media is used as a propaganda tool. And if you don't believe me, check out what Russia is doing now. They are making sure that only their voices get to the people so they can feed them lies and so on. God has given us a Christian television station, MTM TV, and the task, hallelujah, yes. And the, the task is great, the task is great. And there are two main areas. One has to do with unity. God is depending upon you, MTM TV, and upon us to help to unify the body of Christ. If there's one medium that can do that, is the media, it's television or radio. It's to bring, help to bring together the body of Christ. And so unity is a big part of it. The second part is to educate, to motivate, to stimulate the body of Christ concerning the end times. 
And God showed me recently when we just came back from Australia. And while we were there, we realized, Pastor Otis, that the developed world was way ahead of us, galloping towards end times. Meaning, we could be trapped everywhere that we went. Because even the public transportation, we had to swipe going on, and we had to swipe coming off. And if you didn't swipe coming off, let us forget, or whatever, penalty, immediately you lost money off your card. We went to places to, you know, to be refreshed, whatever, to buy something. And they said, no, we are cashless. Not even a cup of coffee, pastor. We are cashless. You know what that means, beloved? That not even their own money they're accepting. It's just a piece of card. Yeah. So they can track us. And the last thing I want to just tell you as an example. My husband made a mistake and went to the following floor. The, the, the floor above us because the elevator was sticking. It wasn't working well. And when he realized that he was at the wrong door, he came back. The following morning, uh, I'm Reverend Hansen. The two policemen came to him at breakfast to find out what was he doing at door 515. Simple mistake. It's the first time I go to a hotel and I couldn't go to another floor. Yes, at breakfast they came. Can we have a word with you and call him away in front of the people? I didn't say this is Cuba or communist China or so on. I said we're Australia. Beloved, and I'm challenging MTM and all of us because we are MTM family. I'm challenging us to warn the people that the end time is closer than we think. It's upon us and what's happening in Israel and the Middle East right now. Wake up, come out of survival mode and out of wanting things, 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 things. When Matthew 6.33 says, and I want us MTM to keep it before the people. Because it says, seek first the kingdom of God. His righteousness and all these things shall be added. The church, the enemy has caused the church to twist that. And what we have done instead is seek first the things. And then the kingdom of God will be added somewhere down the road, pastor. It's so wrong. And I apologize to you, people of God, if we have taught you incorrectly. The Bible says, God first. God second, God third, God is priority, every time priority. And then he will choose to add these things unto us. So, praise God. Yes. So, congratulations again. Hallelujah. And I declare strength over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare strength. Strength for the future strength for the long haul strength for the long distance and I declare that every resource that you need every resource will come to you you won't have to run after it as you seek first with MTM TV the kingdom of God everything that you need in even human resource will be added they will come and they will say God sent me hallelujah and to help you to assist you and so blessings and blessings and more blessings upon you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and church together we say amen hallelujah come on put your hands together for Mrs. Maria Abershaw amen a blessing to have her and her husband here sharing Brother Devon, Uncle Devon, Uncle Devon, blessings, amen, the blessings to have them. I remember years ago, they used to do conduct some training then at Word of Life, I'm not sure if you remember them days, amen, so it's a blessing to have you guys fellowshipping with us, amen, amen, amen. I'm following the script. Pastor Donet Norman. Amen. We're going to invite her for her greeting. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for her. 
Good morning. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't put her face to the name, you see? Hmm, let me help you. Let me help you there. There you go. Good morning, God's Family Ministries International. Good morning, Pastor Manning and um, Prophetess Joy. Um, good morning to the Hansons. And uh, good morning. Just good morning. It's a good morning. We give God thanks and praise for all that he has done and all that he has been doing. Well, I am here on behalf of Passion and Purity, which is a youth movement raised up by God, and we serve in the context of schools, church, and media. We want to congratulate MTM TV on 25 years of ministry in Jamaica, the Caribbean, and around the world. Put your hands together. We want to thank Reverend Basil Hansen and Pastor Diane Hansen for extending their kind courtesies for hosting um, Passion and Purity for 15 years. This year we celebrate 15 years of ministry and from the inception they graciously hosted us. We are non-profit and trust me they have just taken it on and sponsored Passion and Purity and Word Vibes and we give God thanks. Both ministers have given us much encouragement and support, not only to our ministry, um, but to our family and to us as a couple. We pray God's continued grace and favor on MTM. MTM was raised up by God to be an expression of mercy and truth across the nations. And we pray that God will continue to expand them, to move them from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from victory to victory, because we need, now more than ever, the truth of God's word going out across the nations. Do you believe that? I want to recognize my husband, Pastor Andrew Norman. Could you please stand? Um, our Vice President, Mr. Jermaine Johnson. Our Tech Team host, Mr. Romario Mitchell. And three of our children are here this morning. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. This is a cause to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God bless you. We speak increase. Great increase. And we, we pray that you will continue to go across the nations with the undiluted word of God. Thank God for 25 years to the honor and glory of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for her. Mm. Uh, some of the dots are connecting. Once again, if you're joining us live on MTF TV for the first time, Welcome to um, our special service. We are here to celebrate with the family of MTM. And um, we're here celebrating those joining us online. Amen. Yeah, we're going to have church. We're having church, right? Yeah, man. Amen. Just in a different way this day. I mean, as we celebrate um, with them. Pastor Donnett Norman. I actually know you guys. I'm saying, I mean, I mean, you see, I have a challenge, you see. No disrespect to you, madam. I have a challenge, you see. My challenge is that women are really beautiful transformers. I have a serious challenge. And so the last time I met you, you didn't look the way you're looking now. I thought you was Afro the last time I saw you. I remember I saw you in the park, I think, for earlier the year. And so, and your husband is doing a good job at it too. Because he had hair on the head. So, so, so now he's bald. So, I'm like, okay. So I apologize. Yeah, I know about passion and purity while I was yet in college on, on, on a radio, then Love um, FM years ago. And I want to, I, 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 ironically, just about a month and a half or two months ago, I was talking to some of the church members about you guys and telling them, love to have you guys coming sometime. I think you guys are doing a great ministry. It's something that we don't have enough of. And I want to applaud you guys. Big up. So I've somewhat 
um, being impacted by what you are doing and really love it. And I want to say to you, keep doing whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And don't, don't, don't stop what you're doing. And sometimes I know ministry can be a little challenging, especially when you're operating as probably not with an, a congregation, but just operate a ministry. But be encouraged. You guys are doing a good thing. Um, the worst in this time where people don't understand the purity of being a child of God. We have to understand that God calls us out of dirt to become clean. And it should not be a struggle to stay clean. Make sense? So we celebrate with you and the work that they do. I know that they do sell books and stuff. They're great, great ministry. I, I love what they do. Can't, can't, can't say more than enough. If you're born again believers, they have great materials. I really recommend them. And I said to you, get some of their stuff. Young Christians who might be thinking you want to do something that you should not be doing, read some of the materials. Good stuff. Amen? So once again, let's celebrate with them. And reading the manuscript, we have Pastor Diane Hanson. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She is actually the pastor. She's actually the, almost the pastor of Basel and Steno. But <laughs> that, I want to that with it. She's the husband. She's, she's the wife, amen, of the founder and one of the founding uh, co founders of MTM TV. And we appreciate her. She um, has been there with him all this time with this and so she's a visionary of it and um i know you probably are more than likely have seen her face on it our, pro, our early morning program amen and she comes to bring greeting put your hands together as we welcome <laughs> lady hansen put your hands together we celebrate her it is still morning hallelujah Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Shall we give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor that is due unto his name? And this morning as the song was sung, grateful, grateful, grateful. We are grateful this morning for the work of MTM and for the work that God has been doing through God's Family Ministries International, touching lives in Jamaica and across the Caribbean and globally. And we give God praise for his mighty works. He remains a faithful God. And so this morning I stand here being grateful, being grateful for being given the privilege by my husband, Reverend Basil Hanson, to be by his side and to support him. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity of serving with you. I appreciate you. I honor you and I respect you for what you would have allowed God to do in your life. You're a true example. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I must acknowledge your pastor, Dr. Bishop Otis Manning. Thank you. Um, to your lovely wife, I'm not seeing her here right now. Prophetess Joy, Ma uh, Joy Linda Manning, are you here? Is she? Okay, she is on her way, I was told, but I've had the privilege of having her on Morning Glory Devotional Program, and let me tell you something, what a radical, what a radical woman she is, and though she's not here, I want to acknowledge her this morning, the family here, the leadership here, thank you so much for allowing us to share with you this morning, we really feel appreciated by you. To the MTM family that is here, could I just invite you all to stand our supporters of MTM? We have the Normans who are here. Please, we invite you to stand. They have stand with us. They have supported us. I really want to appreciate the MTM family that has joined us this morning. I want to say thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Really appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Um, Bailey, Kevin Bailey and his wife, Muriel Bailey. Thank you to so, uh, Minister, can I call you Minister Blondell? Right, and can I say TBC, uh, not TBC, um, Trenchtown Radio is in the house because, of course, uh, my dear friend is part of um, the Trenchtown Radio. 
And of course, all of us are connected. We are connected people of God because as MTN, we understand the importance of working with the church community to get the gospel. As we have said this morning, our scripture is Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, which tells us, Go ye therefore into all nations. We can't just go on ourselves. We're going to have to go with the people of God. And so we say thank you. Of course, I must acknowledge uh, Pastor Donnett Norman and Blondell Henry as members of the Feast of Esther family. We are women on a mission. Hallelujah. We are women on a mission for change in this nation. And so we give God thanks. And by the way, Feast of Esther is a global ministry. And I have the opportunity of being the coordinator for Feast of Esther Jamaica. And so I greet you this morning. And I just want to tell you a little bit about MTM Television. You would have heard that we are celebrating 25 glorious years of ministry. But perhaps you might want to know a little bit more. And so I'm just going to take two minutes, um, Dr. Manning, to just share a little bit about MTM TV and how we got started. Amen. And so, of course, we, um, MTM TV, our Mercy and Truth Ministry, was started in 1992 by my husband, Reverend Basil Hansen, where he answered the call. And of course, during that time, God has give, gave him the opportunity to travel across the Caribbean region. And little did he know that God was actually preparing him for what was to come. And by 1998, in October, he started MTM TV, which is Mercy and Truth Ministries Television. And since then, there has been no turning back. And so we started on one cable network, and then we grew to four. And then years later, what happened? We moved back to one. And that was in 2004. So we started in 1998. Things were going well. And by 2004, the devil stepped in. But let me tell you something, people. Listen, the devil is not stronger than God. God is all-powerful. And when he gives you a vision, just keep going at him. Keep pressing your way. Keep believing in him. Keep, keep trusted in him. And so, 2004, we went to one cable network and we said, my God. But he stood firm. He stood on the solid rock. He had faith in God. And we can only say that we have come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. word and we can say that he has never, never failed us. And so, I mean, from 2006 when we had the challenge by 2006 God was in the background moving and by 2006 we started expanding into the Caribbean region and we were the first television network to carry um, to be on the internet carrying our broadcast right across the world on the world wide web seven days a week 24 hours a day. We were the first in 2006, not just as a Christian network, but as a network, a television network in Jamaica. We were able to do that in 2006. We're the first local cable network to have a schedule up. You know, when you turn your TV, to have a schedule up. And so we are the first in everything. We're the first Christian television in the Caribbean because today we can proudly say that we are in 24 Caribbean islands today and we give God thanks. We're in Trinidad, we're in Tobago, we're in the British Virgin Island, Turks and Caicos and I could go on and on but sure in the interest of time I invite you to go to our website www.mercyandtruth.tv for more information but not only are we on television in these Caribbean um, 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 nations, but we are also in Canada on Tuba, and we are also recently launched in India on Ozana TV. And this is what God has done. And I want to just encourage us this morning to say, never you despise small beginning. Never look what the Lord has done. And it's not because we are good or great, but because we remain faithful to him and God is calling us to remain faithful to him and so today we have our own programs that we are now producing so we have pastors from across the Caribbean on our network across the United States we have pastors in Africa in the United Kingdom being on MTM and we are now able to produce our own programs we produce um, um, Arise Intercessors on behalf of um, 
Reverend Maria Harbajan. Morning Glory that is there is produced by MTM. We have the Erudite News that um, our dear sister Camelia is one of the persons on the news on the news team. And so God is raising up and he's doing something. And I want us to understand that Christian media in this time is relevant is relevant a lot of us are running to youtube and we're running to our um, facebook there, but there's gonna come a time where we can't post the gospel on these network and so we gotta have to support the christian television network so that the gospel of the true and living god the undiluted gospel can go on and on and on and on we have that responsibility when you say go ye therefore we must take it personally. It's not just for your, your, your bishop or for MTM. We have that responsibility. And so where do we see ourselves in the next 25 years? We see ourselves being relevant. We see ourselves reaching the globe for Christ. We see ourselves um, producing additional Christian um, programming. We see ourselves even doing a documentary on your own pastor, you know, on his journey. We see ourselves making a mark and remaining relevant, pushing back the forces of darkness. We see ourselves going out into the highways and byways and proclaiming the true and living God. We must save our children, believers. We must save our homes. We must save our land. We must save our churches. And it depends on us working together and carrying out that great commission which tells us to go ye and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And he said, and surely I will be with you always to the very end. If you want God to be with us, let us follow his command. God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sam. So put your hands together for her. Hallelujah. At this moment, after about the third, second or third person asking me, let me apologize on behalf of Prophetess Joy Manning. Um, she's on her way. She went to share with the branch, one of our branches in Clarendon. So she actually preaches. Um, she's preaching there this morning, actually. So she's back in the pastors there, the leaders there, to ask her to share with them this morning. So she's. Um, uh, en route and I asked them to call and she said she's on her way so um, that's why she's not here yet I thought she would have been here by now but I understand how ministry is so I apologize on her behalf amen um, and so I send you her love and I know she's on her way coming hallelujah hallelujah 25 years is a blessing um, and some of you remember when you're 25 year old so you're like hmm <laughs> So it's a great accomplishment, it's a great achievement. When you are young, you want to get old, but when you're getting old, you want to get young. Not so with TV stations, they want to get older. It produces you know, a, a little bit more authenticity, experience, and all of that. So it's a blessing for them to be 25, and um, we're grateful for God's blessings with them and on them. Amen. Amen. So grateful to the staff for being here. I've been, you know. Have you had an experience where you know you know somebody, but you can't remember where you know the people are from? And you just know you know, but you don't know how you know, but you know you know. And so I'm looking on Mrs. Henry. Mrs. Henry, you couldn't deliver me. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm saying hello, and I'm, I'm laughing, and I'm saying, where do I know this? So I'm saying, okay, after church, I will go and figure out where I know this. Mrs. Henry, Hello. God bless you, God bless you. All right, so those who don't know, this is uh, the wife of Bishop Henry, inner city for Christ. So generally on a monthly basis, we go down there and do outreach with them. And I'm trying to remember where on earth I know. I just know I know you, but God bless you. Great to have her. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> uh, absolutely beautiful soul, she and her husband. Absolutely beautiful people. It's good to find good people still in Christendom. And they are absolute beauty thank god for you guys here yeah. you know husband is hungry they are hungry the church community and we are grateful we've seen a couple of people well got baptized 
um, down there. And the last time her husband was here, um, some other persons who got baptized came and sang. Got baptized since we've been down there. So it's a blessing. Great working with them. And we pray God's blessings. I think your husband is waiting on me for some more dates. <laughs> so pray, pray for me on that one. All right, lastly, we have the founder and CEO of MTM TV. Amen. We just had Mrs. Hansen. Now we're going to have Reverend Basil Hansen. And he's going to come and share with us on um, more history and whatever the Lord else have laid on his heart. Put your hands together. We will make welcome Reverend Basil Hansen. morning everybody indeed a wonderful privilege for us to share with you this morning our 25th anniversary I want to observe all protocol everybody everything but I'm not going to observe all protocols for the bishop <laughs> But I observe for everybody else, because I can't call everybody name. But um, Reverend Otis Manning and I have come a long way. Very long way. He's one of those that has been an MTM for more than 10 years. Remember when we were at King's Plaza? <laughs> we were at King's Plaza, and you know he found out about us, and he came and met with us. And he was at, there was a plaza down half of Tree Road. Huh? Oh, Parkington Plaza, right. And he came and, you know, he wanted to have his program on MTM TV. And as usual, he opened the door. Because once you're preaching Jesus, we believe you're a part of us. And he has never left. He has been there with us. I can't say exactly how, but more than 10 years. And so we choose today to celebrate with him because of his faithfulness, his commitment, his discipline. Over the years, I've found out something about television. I've found that once you get involved in the airspace, you come under more attacks from the enemy because God has given us dominion over the earth. So we build churches and we dominate the earth. But when you go up in the airspace, the Bible says Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So once you goes up there, the first thing he attacks is your finances. I'm telling you, I've seen it for 25 years. Once you go into the airspace, the first thing Satan does is attack your finances. And the first thing we pull is the program that is on television. That's what I see over the... 25 years and I'm telling you when somebody can consistently remain faithful in evangelizing the Caribbean and the world I have to commend him I have to honor him and I have to respect him because it don't take a boy to do it it really takes somebody with courage and um, I honor you today reverend Dr. Otis Manning, my friend and brother, I honor you. And I bless your church on today. I want to, you know, in, in, I could not come here and not encourage you today as to how we do it for 25 years. It would not be fair for me not to share with you the journey. And in my wife's presentation she mentioned faith a lot and for many of us we could quote faith now faith is the substance of things so far the evidence of things not seen and for many of us that is faith and, and we quote faith without works is dead and for many of us that's faith but, but as I journey for 25 years, I found out there's an element to faith called discouragement. You cannot do faith and not do a journey. Faith is not instant. Faith is a journey. And so as I journey for this 25 years, I found out 
that there is an element to faith called discouragement. And I found out that when you get to that place called discouragement, there is something that you have got to do in order to keep going. I remember the story in St. Luke chapter 5 where Peter and his fishermen toil all night and they never catch any fish. You mean you toiling all night and don't get one fish. And Jesus came the morning and said, yes, I know you don't catch any fish. You must be discouraged. You must be frustrated. You see, we don't like to talk about these elements of the journey, you know. But I like to talk about them because they are the real issues that we have to deal with in overcoming to get to 25 years. So we like to talk about the substance and the works and all of those things. The nice things, but I like to face the issues that will deter you from fulfilling your purpose. And one of those is discouragement. And so when Peter toiled all night and never catch any fish, he was discouraged. We know Elijah just called down fire from Mount Carmel, but then Jezebel wanted his head. He was discouraged. What do you do when you are faced with that demon of discouragement? And I've found out that 25 years I've had to fight many of those demons. Many of those demons to get here. But here is how I deal with it. And this is how the Lord would want us to deal with discouragement. Because if you're on a journey in your family, you're going to deal with discouragement. If you're on a journey building this church, I remember when I, when I came here when this church was being built, right here was the studio. If you saw what was here, if you saw what was here, you would be discouraged. But you don't have to give credit. Doc, you're, you're, you're great. Look at it today. So, so the so the, so the, so the St. Luke 5 passage says they caught nothing after working all night. So they got weary and tired. And Jesus came and said to them, pass your net out again. But this time, do it on the other side. Don't do it the same place. Change your position. But I want you to do it again. And the disciples said, but Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about. We don't toil all night. We are weary. We are tired. We are discouraged. We can't go on anymore. But Peter said something, and this is what I want to leave with all of you. At thy word, I'm going to do it. Because here is the thing, you know. If there was no fish, before he spoke. When he spoke, fish will show up. And that is why it is a journey. Because you are going to have to deal with the uncertainties of the journey. So when they came to the morning and there was no fish in the net, Jesus said, cast your net on the other side. And Peter said, I'm going to obey you, Lord. Let me tell you something. Even when there is no fish, there is no situation, if Jesus said it, once he said it, it appears. It becomes so. And that is the key on your journey. Whatever he said to you to do, just do it. That's what Mary said when the wine ran out. Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. But then I discover something else. And this is what I discover on the journey for 25 years. Nothing that is made with hands, human hands, can contain the glory of God. You can make all you want to make. You can build all you want to build. All the fancy everything. God don't live in this. He lives in you and me. Nothing that is made by human hands can contain the glory of God. So the net broke because it wasn't fish. It was God 
who spoke and it appeared. So it couldn't contain what it catch. So nothing made by human hands can contain the glory. You become that glory that God can use today. God bless you. Thank you very much. Come on, put your hands together for Reverend Basil Hansen. Okay. And part. Um, as I said, we want to honor um, Reverend Dr. Otis Manning today for his service, not just to God's family ministry, but to the region. I mean, recently he was in Trinidad um, preaching, um, and he has been all over the place preaching the gospel. So he's a global ministry, and he's a global man, right? So I want to honor him today and we want to present him with an MTM plaque and it says presented to Dr. Otis Manning, God's Family Ministries International. In honor of your support to televangelism in the Caribbean, you have made a difference by impacting nations with the word of God. And I want to thank you sir for being a man of vision because without vision the people perish and my people perish because of luck of knowledge and that is what you have represented over the last 10 years that you have been an MTM we salute you we respect you and we commend you into the hands of God and pray that he will give you many, many more years and many more success. God bless you. Blessings. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Reverend Pastor Hansen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a glory and a blessing. I'm preaching the gospel. I remember when we started on MTM TV, I started with the one camera. I remember I, I think I was traveling either to Fort Lauderdale or somewhere there, and I bought a JVC camera. And um, I did that, and I didn't like the quality of the JVC, so I bought a Panasonic camera. Panasonic, the sharp. Always loved Panasonic since then. And I bought the, my, 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 I don't remember what kind of camera. I don't think it was 4K at the time. Panasonic camera. And um, I remember speaking to, um, Pastor Basso, it's been a little encouraging actually. He says, hey Rev, your quality not so bad. You're trying, man. I see you improve. You improve. And that encouraged me to get some more improvement. <laughs> and after that, some of you, um, God has been, listen, my journey has been very iconic. Then I met, I mean, I mean I've met some people across the path of life. Then I met Susie Q. Y'all remember Susie Q? When I was not saved on a little boy, I used to watch Reggae Trail. The exact camera that used to film reggae trailer bought that camera. I'm telling you. So that was my next camera for MTM TV. <laughs> so I bought, I bought that camera from Suzy Q. I still have that camera in my office actually. And um, went from that. Then we're doing that one. And then we, we, I learned about angles. When I started streaming on TV, one camera. Anywhere we go, follow me. <laughs> one single camera. And then after that, um, I think I got some more cameras. Which one did I get? I got, okay. I went to preach. I went to preach in a place named Cockinale, Geisel. That's where Minister Cheryl is from. And um, while I was there, the Lord spoke to me. And then I bought a, a, a Panasonic camera then. Because I like Panasonic. Image it was beautiful. And then we just kept improving, 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 improving. And to today, we have 4K and I don't even know what kind of camera. <laughs> 4K and cinema cameras now. 
Amen. But it has been a journey. And if that has been a journey for me, imagine for him, Tim, at some of the points they left off. I remember when they, they, they transitioned from regular TV and they're now a Fuji, fully digital and a HD TV. Let's put our hands to celebrate them. So sure. I've been going down the road with, with them from, 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 from the days. Amen. Amen. And it's been a journey, a, a beautiful one. And we give God thanks for his blessings. Amen. I mean, prophetess showed up somewhere and she disappeared. Oh, okay. She didn't disappear. She just rearranged. <laughs> I tried to uh, She become a lady. <laughs> so, amen. That's prophetess joy. They've been asking for um, So, uh, bless it. Yeah, man. She was sharing in Clarendon this morning with one of the branches there. Amen. And it's a blessing. All right, I won't keep you too, too, too long. Let's get into the word. The scripture aiming has been on the screen and we're just going to open it up matthew if we'll be so kind as we get back into it hallelujah share briefly with you matthew 28 19 and 20 if we can put it on the screens those who are watching on mtm tv we celebrate with uh, you guys who are watching 25 years of ministry and i pray god's blessings on you and um Hopefully, you'll be able to get as much word as you can. Amen. All right. Matthew 28. Let's pray so much. So Holy Spirit, open my heart. Help me to receive your word. Grant me wisdom, knowledge, understanding as a result of hearing your word. So, as a Jehovah God, I declare fruit, God the fruit, shall increase and abound as a result of hearing your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can I read my friend? And it says go, this. Go ahead. Go ye therefore mm -hmm. and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy 20. Ghost, teaching them to observe all things mm -hmm. whatsoever I have commanded you. Right. And lo, I am with you always. Even, Even unto, unto the, end, the, the end, end of the world. All right. So uh, that's a theme MTM is celebrating for the 25 years. There's something I want to share with you. Um, over the years, the church, we've called this the Great Commission. That the Lord has commissioned the church with this verse. And uh, this was the first sending, in essence, was a sending statement. And it's something we've celebrated over the years. As I studied this passage, entire passage, can I share something I want to share with you? And what I discovered as I looked through it, and those who don't know me, please, I love to walk. I don't exercise, so this is my exercise in ground, I know, all right? So just get used to it. Just follow me with your eyes, all right? You won't get dizzy. You're sitting down, all right? <laughs> so as I read through this passage, I've discovered something that while this is a great commission, there was a commission before this commission. And so the church has, has theologically, we have put this and packaged it and said, this is the great commission. Yes, it is. But I discovered there was a commission before the commission. Let's go to verse 10. We're going to open verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. And let's hear what it says. Then said Jesus unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, read. Be not afraid. Uh-huh. Go, go tell them. Read it again. Last word, G-O. Then Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. Be not afraid. Next one. Go Stop. tell. Yeah, yeah, them two they can't work. One again, say that again. Just them two there. Go tell. Here we go. The first commission is here. So the ladies are here, and Jesus says to them, Go and tell. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Go and tell. Before we reach to the Great Commission, there's something I want to talk to you about because there's some truth that is shared here not, that I've not heard in this context that I might bring it to you this morning. But it doesn't mean it's not a reality. I'm going to share with you for 20 minutes, probably less. A little twist that happens and I hope you'll be able to follow me through real quickly. I want you to write it, write it as much as you can. Read now, finish reading for me. Go tell uh -huh. my brethren uh -huh. that they go into Galilee uh -huh. and there shall they see me. So the first thing I want to say to you if you're writing, God said to them, to the women, tell the brethren before you go, come and see me first. 
In essence, you need to have a revelation. You need to have a, a conversation. You need to know me. Meet with me. Get to know me before you tell people about me. Many times you're preaching to sinners, they might preach to you. What them know? What you know? You're telling me what you've been told, but you don't know Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? So the first thing he says is, I want you to go and tell the brethren, meet me. Now Jesus could have done this himself. He didn't. He met with a second and said, please, go and let them know. Go and meet me in Galilee. Let them go and wait. So now, what we find out is that Jesus sent them. Jesus what? Sent what? So now, we find that there are people who are sent. They were sent to go to some people. Can we read the next verse? No, that's the first one. Please make sure you're right so we can follow. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Huh? All right. So now, I want you to write this down. The woman saw Jesus before they brought Jesus. They saw him. And after they saw him, they brought the testimony and said, Hey guys, Jesus wants you to meet him in yonder. In essence, hey guys, Jesus wants you to get ready to meet him. He's coming back. Everybody with me? So people who are spreading the gospel most first have some form of, of, of revelation of who Jesus is. Everybody with me still? Everybody with me? If you have not properly had a revelation of Christ, what are you going to share? Everybody sharing everything, especially in the days of invention of Facebook. Everybody want everybody to look in at them face. I wonder if it's called Facebook. <laughs> Let's read it. All right. So, in essence, you must first meet with Jesus or find him before you can bring him. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? All right. So, now, what Jesus did to these ladies, he commissioned them. Everybody with me? And sent them. Let's read. Let's go on. Verse 11. Now, when they were going. Now, when they were. So here's a question. Why were they going? They were sent. So while they were going, and I want to talk to the answers and everybody else who is going. Everybody who is going, I'm going to talk to you. While you are going, let's listen to it because I don't want to go ahead of me. Read. Behold, uh -huh. some of the watch uh -huh. came into the city. They what? They came or they what? Anybody can give me one word for that? They came or they went. While people are sent, there are other people who went. Right in your Bible. While people were sent to carry the gospel, there are people who went on another mission. If you decide you're going to preach the gospel of Christ, get ready for some people that will come along you were never sent, they go went with you. And some people not going just went with you they were went against you <laughs> everybody with this so far while the ladies were going similarly somebody else was going notice the bible was very careful to put all of this in the same context it was not even in a divided in the same time everybody with me still all right let's read a little bit more let me get it shewed unto the chief priests uh -huh. all the things that were done uh -huh. and when they were assembled with the elders mm -hmm. and had taken counsel they gave large money uh -huh. unto the soldiers Read on. saying say ye mm -hmm. his disciples came by night uh -huh. and stole him away alright so watch this now let's write down because it's not going to be a long message so now the ones who were sent were sent to go and tell, right? Now the ones who went now, their job is to discredit. There are people whose job is to discredit you. Discredit the church, discredit MTM TV, discredit the evangelists, the pastors. There are always people, their job is to went to discredit you. And they're going to make up stories. 
Now it is so interesting that one of the things that happened here that they, they pay them and say, say that they stole the body. In essence, tell them that the church are thief. You know what they that one? Tell them they are thief. They stole. <laughs> Number two, tell them that they are liars. Jesus is not coming now back. From here, baby, I hear say Jesus will come back. Hello, you see him? No coming back. Why? Tell them, convince the world that they are lying. And if the world believes they are lying, that is good. They say, not me. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? And so the Bible will tell you that this propaganda continued on to today, and that has not changed. Try to tell people around you that Jesus is coming. Now, I, I'm just going to break a little part to you. I don't have the whole time to break it out. I shared it with this morning service. So I really don't have all the time. I think we look on Luke this morning. We look on Luke. What's Luke? Luke what did I look on? Don't have all the time. Luke what? Luke 17 verse 28. Put it on the screen for me real quickly. Luke 17 verse 28. Let me show you something real interesting. I don't have all the time. Let's go. Luke 17, 28. Read it and let me hear what it says. When we're talking about Jesus is coming, people don't pay attention to that. I think it's, it's, it's nah, man. Jesus ain't coming back. I heard uh, uh, what uh, uh, Sister Maria was saying, and I hope you're listening. Listening to how vast this world is going. Jamaica is behind, but they, the world is going far. Now, listen to this. I want to show you some real quickly. Read what it says. Likewise, also as it was nah, in. 26. 26 or 27. Quickly. Yeah. And as it was in the days of Noah, uh -huh. so shall it be also in, in the, the days, days of, of the Son. All right, real quick. I don't have time. I'm going to take seven minutes to do this for you. All right. This one I, wrote, I shared with the church that the, the Bible was written in three, three languages. We have Aramaic, we have Hebrew, and we have Greek. And so now what you have here now is the word Noah, N-O-E, which is the same as Noah. All right. This is now in, 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 in Greek. So Greek now don't translate the name Noah. It says no, but the same person. Now Jesus is talking as it was in the days of Noe, which is still Father Noah. Amen. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Now we're going to come back to Father Noah, but Jesus says something else similar. Let's keep two verses down. Let me see. Two verses down. Likewise, as it was in the day of Lot. Now, now, now notice the two people that Christ mentioned is two, Lot and Noah. Now, what are the things that happened in the days of Lot and no? I'm going to show you a little twist I discovered. I want to show you real quickly. Here are some of the few things. Number one thing we see is in the days of, uh, of, of, of Lot, there were homosexuals that pressed against Lot, the righteous. Notice number two. It was the entire city that was okay with homosexuality. Jamaica has moved from a place of no gays around here till... Well, go on, yeah, right. Just stay there with it till yeah, we can rub shoulder now. Jamaica is no longer the place of hey, no, 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 around here. No, we've moved away. I don't believe you should kill nobody, killing them won't change them. But we've we've moved to a place, and if Jamaica out of every country can move, something wrong. Anybody with me? And so what we've done as a country and as a norm, not just homosexuality, but all form of sins have become okay and okay and okay. I saw something in the news that I don't want to talk about. I don't think this is a place to talk about it. But I'm saying to you that, 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 that we saw, amen, homosexuality was strife. Everybody with me? We saw rejection of God. And when you look on, 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 on um, the first verse, let's go to 26. When you look on this one, quickly, 26. And when you look on the day of Noah, what was present? Noah was preaching the gospel and nobody was paying attention. But let me show you something real quickly. Not real quickly. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 11. 11. Thank you, my dear. Genesis chapter 6. And let's read it. Let's read what it says. And I do have a lot of time. Read it. The Genesis. earth also was corrupt uh -huh. before God. Uh -huh. And the earth was filled with violence. Earth was filled with what? Violence. As it was in the day of Charlie Beach in the coming of Jamaica and full with violence. Everybody knows everybody I kill everybody everywhere. People are dying for no reason all over the world. 
But there's one little thing I'm going to share with you and I'm going to continue. There's something I want to share with you so you can look real quickly. This is the Hebrew word for violence. Spell it for me. H-A-M-A-S Spell it for me. Hebrew word for void. H-A-M-A-S And the word and the world was filled with Hamas. In this time, that's what they said. God said, the world is filled with Hamas. Now, Hebrew, God spoke. In Hebrew, they understand Hamas means violence. We don't know that. As it was in the days of Lot, Noah, so shall it be. The world will be filled again. Hamas. I wonder if nobody knew him so. Same thing knew him so. What has caused the most violent uh, 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 eruption in the Middle East again? Hamas. The different, the problem is they speak Hebrew. We don't. So to them, they understand this. We don't. Let's flip and go back over to Matthew. Hope you get it. Let's go and go watch over the first service. Yeah, man. Let's go back. Matthew, you're free to go and watch first service. Let's go. Matthew, real quickly. Where are we? Matthew, we did it, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Finish. Yeah, verse yeah. 13. Yeah, Matthew. What are we? Verse what? 13 was the last. So make them to be liars. Tell them you don't want to tell people Jesus is coming back. Let them don't believe. It's just violence that caused people to be angry and murdering themselves. No, but we can find a solution. Yeah, we can put in a crime plan and a crime strategy. Oh no, man, let's just block up the whole place and, and put in, what you call them, SOEs. That will help. Just let the bad man them stay at man, Tivoli and Jungle and, and the good guys them stay in a trench town and that will help. Don't help. That's not the answer. Everybody with me so far? So now, we see from day one that there is a plan against the truth that Jesus Christ is risen. Am I talking to anybody in the house? No, you don't understand what that means. It means that if Paul says it is a, if God is not risen, then wherein can we boast? What is our salvation based on? If Jesus Christ died and he never rose, then we have nothing to boast of. We, the Bible said we'd be like every other man, most miserable. We would have no reason to say that we have a risen Savior who bought our sins. Am I talking to somebody? The entire gospel is based upon the fact that when Christ died, he rose again. And so if Satan says to everybody, that Jesus is not alive then our preaching of the gospel is surely in vain I wonder if I can talk to somebody the devil is a liar and that's why from day one he's bent on discrediting gospel he's bent on discrediting preachers and he's bent on discrediting the church and I went to quite details this morning that's why we have a harm of Hamas, A-H-A-M-S, that is formed from a, 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 a violent part of the Muslim. There are two types of Muslims. There's Sunni, Sunni and Shia. And so one of them, for a sort of violent harm, that's where Hamas comes from, violence. Literal word, that's the meaning. Why? We must fight against the principle that Jesus is risen. The world does not have a problem, Sister Maria, with Jesus Christ. They don't. They have one problem. He's risen. Don't tell nobody that. I watched up to this morning, Muslims, brother. They say we believe in Jesus. Peace be upon him. We believe. They don't have a problem to believe that Jesus came on the earth. History proves it. The one problem and it's been fought from day one don't tell me that Jesus is alive am I talking to somebody but somebody in Jamaica write a little song so don't try to tell me that God is dead he woke me up this morning don't try and tell me he's not alive he lives am I talking to somebody the, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying every religion there's one difference in every single religion on the earth nothing except one every religion have a God but no religion except the 
religion of the Christians of a God that died and rose again. There is no if anybody understand that's where the power is Paul said all oh, that I know him and the power of your resurrection to be made confirm I wonder who I'm talking to there is power not just that he went down but power that he got up that is the hope that's the hope the hope that we know my God almighty that Jesus never stood in other group I went to Jerusalem. I don't know what me to follow everybody for, but me just go look. Me never go look for see me see Jesus. Me just go look on the grave. And I went there. The angel never had to appear to me. Be can I say he is not here? For he is risen. I know that he is not there. He is risen. Me just go like one tourist for peeking to myself. Because I know that he died. But he rose again. Am I talking to somebody? Slap your neighbor, say neighbor. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because. the good news the good news is that he did not die and stay dead meet me tell them to meet me yes master we're going to tell them what what you just say him do what it mean when I listen to the language of these guys it meant that sister they saw something the Bible said they fainted as dead but at some point in the interaction they must have waken up because they gave an account of everything how can you give an account of everything if you didn't see anything so by the word and it tells me that some point in time they woke up and they themselves would have seen Jesus I wonder if I talk to anybody they would have seen it can I talk to somebody but this is the problem of the world there are some people God to call them but money keep people in bondage there are people who know that God is for real but when them see money my God they will do anything for the dollar and the dollar has become the God no wonder Jesus Jesus said you cannot serve two God at the same time you cannot serve God and mama they saw him but they said we're going to pay you a large sum of money read that verse for me one more time my friend read it for me one more time I want him to see it Same. no 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 one before that 12 give me 12 let me see and when they were assembled uh -huh. with elders uh -huh. and had taken counsel, uh -huh. they gave large... They gave money. Why would they give me verse 11? Verse 11, listen to this. Now uh -huh. when they were going, uh -huh. behold, uh -huh. some of the watch came to the city and showed what? Into the city uh -huh. and, and showed the priest what? the chief priest all A -L -L. the things that L -L. were done. All. What can you show if you were the knockout? You must have seen something. They are telling what they saw. Boss, we knock out, you know. We just see one big bright light. Pow! We knock out. But when we wake up, we see one man. The man we did in the grave. We see him, you know. And he might talk to the people them. And he might tell them something. We don't hear what they say, but we still run off like some good news him tell them. They run gone and them not cry no more. Them a laugh. Because when them not come this morning, them not come cry. But them run leak. Can I prophesy to somebody that what the enemy meant for your ego? God going to turn it around. Can I talk to somebody that you may sow in tears, but you go reap in joy? I don't know what you've been going through, but God going to turn. I said, God, don't slap five. Somebody tell them, God, go turn it around and make it work together for your good. I don't know what you've been through, but God is going to turn. Tell anybody, turn it around for me. Slap somebody and say, around for me. Tell somebody, it's around for me. Tell somebody, turn it around. Come on, let me sing that song. Around for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, declare somebody around for me. Around for me. Do 
don't have any visit, any, any, any people believe. He's turning around, say, he's turning it up. Come on, if you believe it, just lift your voice and declare around for me. Around for me. Somebody declare around for me. Hey God, I love this one. He's turning it. Let's go one more time. He's turning around one more time. Around for me. Around for me. Around for me. Women who are despondent and, and, and frustrated and, 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 and troubled and, 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 and crying. But by the time they were leaving, my God, they were leaving with a good testimony. I don't know what you came here, what you were going through, but I prophesy about somebody's life. By the time this service is over, you're going to be going home with some smiles on your face. Can I prophesy about somebody's life that you're going to leave with something turning? You're going to leave with a Testimony, you gonna leave and say, Look what the Lord somebody shout hallelujah. So now these guys are telling a story of what they saw. They saw something, they saw something. They told the priest all the things that were done, what were done priest we saw a bright light when we saw the bright light it knocked us out but after time we get so cautious we saw them women who were looking so sad this morning running with good news and we saw that man and that, 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 that tomb the tomb is empty there's nobody in the tomb and all we saw was a few little women they were not that strong something marvelous has happened now let's go back to 13 let's go See if I can close it off. Let's go. 13. Saying, mm -hmm. say he, his disciples uh -huh. came by night. Came by what? No, underline that. Came by what? Night. No, what they're doing? They're flipping the switch. Who operate by night? No, dopey. No, Satan. No, no, man. But tell them, tell them come by night. Remember, it is in the morning that this happened. No, but tell them they came by night. Equate the servants with darkness. And am I talking to somebody? That's why when Jesus was alive, they said, You are casting out demons by Beelzebub. Equate if you can't fight it, if you can't disprove it, if you can't discredit, discredit the person. Say, we see the miracles, but you have some dope you're working with. You see him, Jesus. We see it, you know. But the bears the is working with you. Prove darkness. Let darkness be a cause for you to say that the miracles are not legitimate. Let it say that darkness that they came and they took the disciples. Read. And stole him away while we slept. Uh-huh. And if this come to the governor's ear, uh -huh. we will persuade him and secure you. So watch this now. Hinder the gospel. Discredit the weaknesses. Because at this time, these ladies are now becoming weaknesses. Discredit them. Say what they are saying is not true. Let them become the real liars. Anybody saying this? Let's buffer the truth. Say that Jesus is not reason. Everybody saying that? Huh? Let's make up stories. We don't worry yourself. We're going to cover you. If it reach to the authority, we're going to preserve you. As long as you don't let people know the truth. Now, here's a sad part. There are many people in bondage because they simply don't know the truth. That's why the gospel being broadcast on television stations is important. Because the stations help to tell people the truth. The gospel broadcast on the internet is important because the internet in this case helps to tell people the truth. We're all true. true. You need to show yourself approved unto God. Read the Bible. See 
Amen. If you can find the truth of the matter, the full truth. So the enemy says, no, let us discredit the truth because it's not, we can't stop, stop. That Jesus is not risen. If we can spread it before they get sent, then we can succeed. What is happening? A dark council is planning. Whenever you decide your mind to preach the gospel, there is going to be a territory of darkness. And watch this. Notice who is planning. Sorry to say the church was involved. Oops. Or let me put it this way. What looked like the church. What looked like the church. Everybody with me? One of the key of Satan is to get religious people who are in authority to bow to the knee of Satan. That's something that the church does not pay a lot of attention to. Satan is after worship. And there are people who God lifts up. And when God lifts them up, people get to know who they are. And if you can let them bow and then spread a lying gospel, it goes back to Satan. I wonder if anybody understands what I'm saying. So now notice, this is the head of the councils that is making up a lie to distort the truth. This was not the regular preacher, man. This was the archbishop. This was a chief bishop, major, major bishop. This was a leader of the church that says, let us discredit. I saw something recently that might have missed some of your ears or your eyes. The Pope have decided that he's going to somewhat put together an okay plan for homosexuality, for marriage to some degree. Did you saw it? Yes, because it just come hang always have to come from up there. So no little man down here, so can't change them thing there. So Satan is always looking for somebody in a big chair. You know the big chair man them? And them man they make the decisions. Am I talking to somebody? And so the Pope have said now that we are going to look on how we can give a blessing to homosexuals. Why? As it was in the days of Noah, and as it was in the day of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the son of man these are things ladies and gentlemen that is saying to us look up your redemption joy 9 verse 16 then the 11 disciples went away into galilee mm -hmm. into a mountain where jesus had appointed them mm -hmm. and when they saw him they worshipped him, mm -hmm. but some doubted. Some what? Doubted. And that is what you're going to have in church. Today we're going to have some believers. And we're going to have some doubters. People watch TV. Go going to have some believers. You're going to have some doubters. There are people going to wonder, are these things real? I mean, many people all over. And they, sometimes they, they wonder. I remember, I never can forget. A guy came to me and said, Rev, you know, say, I think he was a fraud. I think you and this demon dopey business. I think you're a fraud, you know. He said, but when my daughter fell sick and I brought my daughter to you and I saw what was in my daughter, I was shocked. He's one probably telling people all manner of stuff. But when his daughter became ill and he had no choice because his daughter was just fainting, 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 he realized there's something wrong. Because nobody no fear so. And when he heard and saw, he said, but Jesus and peace, I choose something this. Devil will always make people not to believe. I was at Paul Bogle a couple of years ago and I was helping the Baptist church out there a couple of years ago. And when I went to Seaforth, the, 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 the principal at the time of Paul Bogle came publicly and said, Rev, can I bother Mike? And he says, I want to publicly repent to you. No mean and no fly. He says, Rev, for years, I tell people, say, no, you are fake and you are that. He said, but you prayed for my son. And when I saw what God did my son, I want to publicly say, I'm sorry. There are people in high and low, they're going to discredit the gospel. People going to find reasons why they don't believe. 
Notice when you got baptized and you tell people you're saved, they give you one month. One week. They don't believe what you have is authentic. Can I testify to somebody? Just say what Brother Paul says. I'm not ashamed <laughs> of the gospel. It is the power. Am I talking to somebody? Everybody gives you a time because they think you're going to fail. But Jesus said unto the disciples, I'm sending you into all the world so you can be a witness. Why? Because you have something on your inside. Touch your neighbor says something is on your inside that is greater than anything that you'll ever have to deal with. Slap the next neighbor say, neighbor, there is something on your inside more greater than anything you have been through. Can I talk to somebody? Somebody as we close no matter what you're going through there is something greater on your inside can I talk to somebody there is something greater no wonder the Bible said greater is he that is than he that is in the world am I talking to somebody no matter what you go through there is a great anointing on you am I talking to somebody Jesus Christ did not just send the apostles he did not just send them he said go into all the world who is he sending he's sending you you have the job and the task to tell somebody about Jesus you who just got saved yesterday you can go and tell somebody wherever you get that from the Bible said that a certain man was filled with demons and devil uh, in the mountain of the gatherings uh, and when Jesus cleansed him uh, he said Jesus I'm coming with you Jesus said no 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 but go back into your village uh, and tell them what great thing the Lord has done uh, am I talking to somebody uh, you don't get it yet let me help 50 people slap your neighbor say look what the Lord did uh, slap your neighbor say look what the Lord uh, can I talk to somebody uh, there are some of you people thought you would be dead by now slap your neighbor say look what the lord am i talking to somebody that people thought you would feel people thought you'd not come to anything in life people thought that you'd never rise to nothing but had it not been for the goodness of the lord is there anybody been written up in society and people write you up people say you will fail but the goodness of the lord have kept you slap your name and say god is god some will doubt whether you're born again or not some will doubt if you've had an encounter some will doubt if you know jesus am i talking to somebody but because he lives i can face tomorrow and because he lives because i know who holds the future life is worth living and testifying of Jesus because I know that he lives saints in Christ we have a responsibility we have a responsibility to let the world see the Jesus we have because the world is not seasoned to try to discredit Jesus Christ they believe he was a man they believe he came on earth they believe he died they don't believe that he's a no man they believe he's dead but they don't believe He's alive. How do we let them know that he's alive? The Bible says Jesus Christ who was proven by many unfallible proofs to be alive. Paul says it this way that the kingdom of God is not in word only but in demonstration, in power you need to pray lord give me an opportunity to show to the world that you are alive create an open door create something create something lord do something that when i say something they will know that you're alive i wonder who i'm talking to in this place the world around us need to know am i talking to somebody a couple years i was walking on a and, and, and I heard the Lord spoke to me. I was not even into full-time ministry. He says, tell that man, don't go. So I walk past this guy and of course, I know me the Lord I talk to. Because the man big and thick and cut up, cut up. 
You know them man who look like them bad, but I really man who cut him up bad. Cut up, cut up, you know, all over. Cut up. So when the Lord talked to me, it's not, the Lord said, tell the man, say, don't go back. I'm contemplating because the man be. So I swallow my pride. I walk over. I said, sir, sorry. Um, the Lord said, if I tell you, say, don't go back. He said, why are man? <laughs> Big dog. I said, sir, I don't know. But the Lord said, if I tell you, say, don't go back. Look for me. So where am I? Me don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. To, that's all the message I heard. I can't tell him more than what I heard. Don't go back. I can never forget the words that come out of the man's mouth. He looked at me. You know a Sean Kingston. I say yeah. You don't know Sean Kingston. They. You know a their father. Them deport me from America and his father carry me back in illegally. I said, that's why the Lord said, don't go. Then the Lord spoke to me, say, if him go back, they will kill him. I said, the Lord said, if you go back, they will kill you. He said, you know, so they shot me up over America there. That's why I'm deport. So now I'm a plan to go back over the God. Say, if you go back, you're dead. Can I tell you? He said, do you know I do not believe in God? I don't believe in the thing you say, God. The man who never believed in God came to church and worshiped with me. Why? One word. Don't go back. Am I talking to somebody? God will create an opportunity for somebody who don't believe. Somebody who don't believe. Don't tell me that they are not savable. They are savable. God can save them. I was in uh, West Palm Beach years ago. And I invite this guy after some time in there. And he says, Rev, I'll come. And he came to church. And he says, I came to church for one reason. He said, I've been invited to cheer church for years and I don't go. But he says, I see the love of God inside of you. A sinner man. He said, the only reason I come, I see the love of God inside. Don't tell me that they are not savable. They are. All they need is to see a weakness on your inside. You are the weakness. There's a little thing that we all say as Jamaican. We are the Jesus that the people is going to see. Junior Sana sang a couple years ago, the only Jesus that people see is the Jesus in you and me. Let your light so shine so God be glorified. The only Jesus is going to see. Some of them go see. He's the one in you and I. What are you doing to shine Jesus? Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah, make Jesus shine. Ask your next neighbor, neighbor. Are you making Jesus shine? You have a responsibility you have a responsibility on the work. You have a responsibility at the office, at the doctor, at the dentist. I know you're going to pull out teeth, but even in the dentist's office, you can tell somebody, you know what, God can't heal your teeth. Am I talking to somebody? It doesn't matter where you are. You're in a hospital bed, you're on one bed. Say, hey, even though I'm sick in every side of you, Jesus can't heal you, you know. It doesn't matter what condition you're in. Bible said in all things give thanks. No matter what you're going through, be an encouragement and be a light unto somebody. Am I talking to somebody in the house? I want to encourage you this morning on behalf of MTM TV. Be a witness. Share the gospel. Share it. Tell the gospel that others may come and know the Jesus we serve. Let's clap our hands for Jesus this morning. Let's pray. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you for another day. This is the day you have made. We do rejoice. A day we've made, you've made for us to share of the fact that you rose. You didn't stay in that grave. That's the only credible reason we get righteousness enough. To according to Hebrews come boldly before your throne for your word declares clearly that our righteousness is like fifth rocks but you clearly stated that we are the righteousness of God in Christ and so this morning we thank you for that 
We thank you, God, that when we come to this house this morning, your grace preserves us. Your mercy keeps us. There are some who are saved and some who are not saved. But your rain and your sun and your moon and your star works for the just as well as the unjust. You've been gracious to one, gracious to all. More importantly, even while we were yet sinners, you kept us alive to hear the gospel. We pray for our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our aunts, our nephews, our nieces, our children, our great-grandchildren, our grandchildren, our grandnephews, our granduncles and in-laws. We ask God that the gospel will be heard and their hearts will be opened. We thank you for the channel of MTM TV that has been broadcast in the gospel 25 years. We ask for continued grace and mercy. We ask that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to bless it. Strengthen the leaders with vision. Give them vision lest they perish. Knowledge send them. Heavenly Father, grant true wisdom from above. We ask God that those who watch will continue to be inspired. Will continue God to be uplifted motivated and encouraged bless networks bless your people and we thank you for all those who are watching on facebook and youtube and on the websites we ask for your grace and your mercy and we say thank you this morning in jesus name amen let's clap our hands for jesus you're here this morning i've just shared with you the reality of the truth I don't know when Jesus is coming but this is what I've said and I keep saying war can only stop by peace no there's no stopping of war except peace what is that mean in the Middle East here's my views my views as I've shared with you while Hamas is reigning is there is going to be a peace treaty whether this time or the next war there must be a seven year deal I don't know if it's going to come this time or it's going to come the next time but we're looking forward for this seven-year deal. This seven-year deal, the Bible says, it's going to be broken in the midst of it. Three and a half years broken. And then the Bible says, the man of sin shall be revealed. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if this war or the next, but no war in the Middle East or anywhere in the world have ever stopped without a peace deal. Ammunition don't stop war because they're going to keep producing them. Only thing that can sign is a peace. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. But right now as I'm talking to you, America is getting involved. Iran is getting involved. Believe it or not, Russia is getting involved. Who else have I heard? Elder one is still on this borderline. Hezbollah, Hezbollah is Iran. So now uh, Elder one, which is uh, Turkey, they're not they've gotten involved too, 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 too much yet. They, uh, there's another country slipping my brain. They are all getting ready to get him. Iran have made it clear that Iran have already, Hezbollah is 100% Iran, therefore uh, it is funding them. We've seen something happening, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to keep happening. Everybody hear me? Now, what is happening across the world? Instead of voting for um, Israel, everybody's voting for Palestine. Tensions around the world, riots, people have been killed, people have arrested. Have you seen it? all countries why we're getting nearer today no i know you're getting used to that every time we are broke on you know the pastor can tell everybody say why why i mean the end time see discredit the preachers discredit them so that when you tell them they don't listen to you as it was in the day of noah repent rain soon fall no i gonna say every day the sky make up not rain now fall repent god will come back with a flood it's a madman. Every day, please make up on him. Say, Rain, go far. Discredit. That's the plan of Satan. That people now no longer believe that wars are a symbol of the end time. Ladies and gentlemen, the word is quite clear. You're not saved. Get yourself in order. You're not here. You're here this morning. You're not saved. I'd love to pray with you. Just stand to your feet, whoever you are. I'd love to pray with you. Just stand to your feet. If you're not saved yet, you're not born again. Not born again. Not born again. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else keep standing? Let me pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you. I remember your word, sir. I hope you remember your word. 
Let me pray for you. God bless you. Let's pray for them. Father, thank you for these who are standing. Thank you, God, that as they stand is a symbol of them acknowledging mentally that, Lord, I do not have you in my life. My life has not been led by you. I know you are God, but I don't have you in my heart. I pray have mercy on their souls this morning. God, let the plans of Satan not consume them. Let the lies of Satan not have them. I bind every spirit. I bind every plan of hell. I shut down every lie. God, preserve them. Cover them. Keep them. Watch over them. We pray. Strengthen them. Give them grace. Oh, Father God, to turn to you before it's too late. I bind every blinded spirit that have kept them from the gospel of truth. Open their heart to receive a gospel. And I pray that they will listen and take heed to the spirit of truth. I pray, Holy Spirit, minister to them. And let it be abundantly clear. You're calling them. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I give you the glory this morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I may keep standing wherever you are. I know, my friend, come and join me. I know. I know I'm not leaving you. This guy have helped me. He helped me over the years to build church. I tell him, don't build church for me to bury him. Can we bury him? He said, build it, help me build it so you get saved. Come. Come, Papa. So he said, Rev, next week. He's been in hospital so many times. So I said, don't build church, we bury you. No, sir. He built it so you can get saved. And come worship God with you too. Amen. The enemy is after his life. And so I know him. He said, Rev, next week when we come. You ready? Good. You, Satan has a little thing that people always think they have time. They always think you have time. I don't worry. You mean know you want to give life to God, but you have time. Enjoy life. You have time. No. Bible says, now is the time of salvation. I know your face. You said, Rev, I want to join that man. I think God is calling me. And I want to listen to the voice of God. You believe God is calling you. Come and join him with me. Come, leave your seat. If you think, Rev, I believe God is calling me. And I think I'm ready to serve God. You want to join? Come, meet me at the front. Come and meet me. I feel God is calling you. I'm going to ask you to meet me where you're right here at the front. If you don't feel God is calling you, you don't think now, you don't think you're ready, you're free to take your seats. But if you feel God is calling you, don't sit down and lie. If you feel God is calling you, come and meet me at the front. I'm going to ask one more time. I'm talking to only the poor people who are standing. If you feel God is calling you, leave where you are. I call him because he told me I'm coming back this week. I'm coming ready. That's why I call him. Do you expect me to call you all? Do you feel God is calling you? Come on, meet me. You ready? Bless you. You ready, Mish? Then come on. So they all of them are with me. You ready, sir? Thank you. You ready, Papa? Thank you. Let me talk to you. Thank you. You're free to sit. Is there anybody else? Let me talk to you. Your mother shared something that happened to you. Yeah, come let me talk to you. I'm going to talk to these one. Stay here. What's your name again? Huh? Miss Archie, give me first name. Huh? Chilta. Chilta. Let me say something to you. And I'm not going to force you and I'm going to badger you. People came to kill you twice. True? True? You aware of what I'm saying? True. God has been gracious to spare your life. Two times. You're alive. You've seen enough. What more are you waiting on? A young man the Lord shared with me and said, he's going to die. I shared with him and said, I'm not afraid. In one week, three times they tried to kill him. They shot, they grazed him. Then he was in a car, they turned on to shoot the man beside him and jumped out of the car. He called me and said, Rev, crying. 
I'm in danger. I said, didn't you tell me I'm afraid? Come and meet me. He came. And he came and I was not at church. I preached and I left. And he didn't see me. He left. I called him. So where are you? He said, where me? Come on, you know, today, and I'm gone. And he left. That was Tuesday. Thursday, they shot him and killed him. That was his 14 count in one week. He died. When God is gracious to you, use it as a wake up call. When God is gracious to you, my friend, understand that God gives you this opportunity to submit your life. There's a prominent gentleman released from prison. I saw him. I said, You know, God released you for one reason. The very next day, give your heart to him. He said, Yes, Rev. You know, I believe it's true. And all me, I talk to him, give your life to God. Till one day he raised him for he said, Rev, me not tell us I'm soon come at church. Why problem? I say, All right. Today is locked away permanently in prison, never to come out. Ninja man. Locked away permanent. God gives you opportunity. No man goes without a warning. Friend, and I'm not telling you this because you 100 percent make up your mind to serve God. May I tell you this as a Jamaican? You will sleep, my dead. Now, because you make up your mind, say, God, you know what's happening upon the God thing? No. I'm talking to you as a young man to a young man. Say, yo, look upon the thing. Brother, you're brave. May I tell you the truth? Brother, me now one car. And the car comes up. We are run from police. Let me tell you. And the car go up on two wheels and drop down. So when that drop down, me remember my prayer prior. Me say, God, take me out of this. Me I come serve you. What, brother, listen to me. Less than two weeks after that, me is a baptized man coming out of weed care. Me, me an idiot. You not kill after me one time I get to kill me and next day. You mad? No, sir. One child. Me say, God, take me out of that care and me give me life. Me, you not come kill after me, Satan, one more time. Forget it. Me make up my mind that was enough. You have to look upon things. I say, you know what I say? I see it and I kill off I'm serious. If, if you've been at the church, not good enough. It's good you're coming to church. Look here. See this? It there more than me and you. It now no way I go. Because it can't get saved. Because it no surrender. You have to surrender. Yeah. It's good you come to church. Mark you. I'm going to let you be to make your own decision. And if you say me, I press you. I just want you to look on what I'm saying to you. Because I know in my heart, God is giving you a chance. I remember me telling you, see, if it wasn't for your mother and father, you'd not be standing beside me. Remember, it's the goodness of the Lord why you are here today. Amen? So I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to take on them. But I'm going to say to you, let go. Give God a try. Amen? Father, I put this young man, stretch your hands towards him. And I pray your grace and your mercy. We bind every spirit that will fight him, resist him. We bind everything that will blind him. Open his heart. And I pray your wish. Your wisdom be done. Touch his heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, it's your choice. May I deal with them? Me just a take. I'm really want you to see. Make sense? Me like the fuck you come to church, but more you understand. Make sense? Your choice. You ready, miss? You ready, sir? You ready, sir? God bless you. Lift your hands with me. I want you to pray a prayer with me. When you pray, I want you to believe in your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Yes, I confess my sins, my faults. Wash me. Make me whole. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior from today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for these that have said this prayer. I pray, sweet Holy Spirit, fill them, seal them with the Holy Ghost, and may your grace be on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's clap our hands and celebrate Jesus with them. Now, as for my brethren here, you probably know the deal. So here's what's going to be happening. I'll be sending him for baptism. So, we're going to take his name and his number. We're going to get him baptized. If you feel like you're ready, pray what do I do? Read the Bible, pray fast, go to church, get baptized. Simple as that. If you're serious about it, we're having a baptism today. You can join him. When you take the name and your number over there, 
you are serious, we get you baptized. Amen. Go over that door, that lady over there. She's going to lead you through that door and take your name and your number. God bless you. Right over there. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Let's celebrate. You can celebrate better than you're celebrating now. Hallelujah! Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice. Amen? Amen. Anybody remember the day they got saved? Was it a blessing? Always a blessing. So it's a blessing when somebody come home. This morning when our camera operators, our daughter got baptized this morning. That's a blessing. Amen? It's a blessing. Amen. When you see your children and your family and your friend getting baptized, it's a blessing. Amen. Oh, by the way, ooh, that man is one of the usher, one of the church sisters' husband. Yeah. Let's clap hands for them. Yeah. That's a blessing when your family come and give their life to Jesus. Not true, man. So sister now, if you come at church alone by herself, amen. She can come with her husband by her side. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray God's blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Got a lot more to do and so I want to get us going for time's sake. While they're being prepared for baptism. Amen. Ushers, can I get your help real quickly? If you need an envelope for tithe and um, for offering, amen. I'm going to be asking that we do send forth one. Last week I asked some people for your help. Amen. Remember we're going to be a blessing to MTM TV and week before I told you. So, um, We'll be doing that. I'll soon give you directions for that. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's get out. Today we will not be doing our regular building fund. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you need an envelope for ties, just lift your hand and Usher will help you. Amen. There's a credit card and a debit card machine to my left. All right, just stand with your tithe in your right hand if you can, real quickly. And declare after Mr. Jove God, you promise in the word, you go rebuke the devour for my sake. According to your word, be done to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, let it be unto you. Maybe may be seated. All right, praise and worship is going to be coming. And please follow the direction of the ushers. They're going to give you some directions as you come with your tithes and your offering. Ushers.
let's go. Let's go for the rest of our day. Yes, yes. yes. Come on, put your hands together. Yes, Lord, say. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our day. Everybody say yes. yes. Yes, Lord, say. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our day. Yes, Lord. Father, we ask for your blessings. Thank you for your gifts of the people. We ask let it be blessed. We declare it blessed. And we declare it so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It is blessed. It is blessed. It is blessed. All right. All right. We got two things to be done. Or three things to be done. All right. Can I get it? Generally, at this time, we'll be doing an offering. Thanks for the folks who've been helping us. I told you week after week, I ask you guys to pray. As we um, continue our building, if you realize we do building, so sorry if you guys could not park. I apologize. Hopefully by December, well before December, God's willing, we'll be able to take it down, and then everybody will be able to park on a Sunday. So what we're doing, we're expanding a double deck car park down there, and then we expand church by the grace of God. Somebody say Amen. Amen. So that's what we're doing. We're in, we're under construction still, as it be. So generally on a weekly basis, we would normally do our building fund. Anybody bring them building fund? All right, so this week I did ask, amen, I we want to be a blessing, amen, we want to celebrate with MTM TV, and so this week we want to be a blessing to them. Ushers, I did ask, amen, we get some envelopes. If you need an envelope, amen, you want to give a gift, amen, to the ministry of MTM TV, amen. I want you to take an envelope for me, please, ushers, and um, if you have it today, I'd really appreciate you doing it. I did share with you. And um, we're going to collect an offering so we can be a blessing to them. Someone say, Amen. amen. Come on, say better, Amen. amen. And uh, um, if you take an envelope and you don't have it, make sure you write on it, MTM TV, that um, if you don't give it today, Amen, um, I'd know where to direct it futuristically. Amen. If you need an envelope, just take an envelope. We want to give them a gift. Amen. Go ahead. Lift your hands. Amen. All over. Just carry an envelope for them. We're going to do an offering right now for them. So today we're not doing a uh, billing fund. Whatever you had for a billing fund is for billing help to build the work of MTM TV. Amen. So we're just going to do it for that. And um, so whatever extra money you brought in your pocket today, I make sure I don't I just collect one offering today. Amen. So we make you keep all of the other money for yourself. So today we're just going to collect it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you the Lord. Amen. The sister is waiting. Go on, brother. Make you go and do your baptism. Meanwhile, just keep taking the envelopes. You want to come look, sister? Come look. Come make sure send baptize them, please. This is her husband. Come look. Make sure send it there. <laughs> please just keep lifting your hands. Or shall we give you an envelope? And um, whatever gifts you have, we're going to do that today. Amen. Look for them, good sister. Maybe I'll put this one on and after that. Lift your right hand, my brother. Lift your right hand. Yes, that one is the right hand. See after me, say, Lord, thy vows be upon me until death. So help me, God. Amen. Clasp your hands. Upon the confession of your sins in Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, as a minister of the gospel, I commission you to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Shut your mouth, stoop, stop your breath. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for his life. We pray coverage. We pray keep him by your blood. We struck down hell. We break the powers of hell. And we speak life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Amen. Hold on on the grill. Yeah, man. Hold on on the grill while you come out. You can come. Hold on to the grill. Yes. Amen. We're grateful unto the Lord. 
Amen. I've known him for quite some years. He helped us up the top when we were building the first church. Or, and he helped us here to build. Amen. It's just a blessing he gives his heart to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Testimony. Huh? I don't remember. Come, listen to this. Huh? Yes. 